continuing our discussion of the first apostolic professors of the gospel, let's talk about Paul. He was considered to be the greatest missionary of the first church, but his profession was largely directed to the Gentiles. A few facts about Paul. He planted numerous congregations in Asia Minor. His writings provide us with some of the clearest substantiation and understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ in the scripture. And he had a gift to make it understandable to people of all backgrounds and nationalities. Paul was a Roman citizen, giving him access to people and places throughout the region. And the persuasiveness of his profession is amplified by his extreme personal conversion. His life was changed in a very big way. His actions supported his words, and what he said is critically relevant for us today. To understand the power of his conversion, we need to understand his personal history. He was born into a devout Judaic family from the tribe of Benjamin and a Pharisee. He knew the law and shunned all things not Jewish. His future association with and love for Gentiles is so unlikely to say the least. He studied the scriptures under Gamaliel, a renowned rabbi in Jerusalem at the time of Christ. He knew the Old Testament prophecies of the Messiah, and for him the concept of the promised Messiah being humiliated and crucified was an absurdity. Paul viewed the early Christian movement as blasphemy and worked zealously to eradicate it. His standing and education gave him political influence and he was given authority to prosecute. In his zeal, Paul committed horrible atrocities against innocent Christian believers. Yet we know that Paul was converted through an encounter with the resurrected Jesus on the road to Damascus, where he was blinded. He was healed and baptized by Ananias according to the instructions of Jesus, and immediately began preaching publicly of Jesus Christ as the Messiah the resurrected Son of God, the source of salvation, and hope for life eternal. He does so with remarkable clarity. This causes us to pause and ask the question, where did Paul get this profound understanding of the gospel? Well, we could reason that it started with his understanding of the scriptural references to the Messiah in the Old Testament, or possibly the testimony of the early martyrs whom he interrogated contributed to his knowledge. But in Galatians 1, we can read Paul's account of his conversion. He claims what he preaches is not from man, but through the revelation from Jesus Christ. He describes his former life, as well as the years that follow his conversion when he decides not to return to Jerusalem and confer with other apostles, but to continue on to Arabia and Damascus, preaching the gospel to the Gentiles. Only after three years does he travel to meet briefly with Peter, who he refers to as Cephas, and James, the brother of Jesus. Please take a moment to read Galatians chapter 1, verses 15 through 21, and discuss this mystery of God's calling of Paul, who was not an original disciple of Jesus, to become his apostle. Notice how despite this, he equips him through his spirit to reveal the gospel so compellingly. Let's also turn back and compare this to the message we bookmarked two weeks ago in our discussion of Apostle Peter's initial profession of Christ where Jesus declares, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my Father in heaven. What conclusions can you draw? So exactly how did Paul profess? In Antioch, Paul was invited to speak a word of exhortation to the people. He accepted the invitation and walked with both Jews and Gentiles, proclaiming that God's promise had been fulfilled through the raising up of Jesus. After being arrested in Jerusalem, Paul addressed the people by telling them his story of conversion. A part of our profession is sharing our faith story with others. When Paul was brought before King Agrippa to defend himself, Paul didn't shy away from his testimony just because of the authority of who he was defending himself to. No, Paul preached the gospel, 
and even King Agrippa confessed he was almost persuaded by Paul's profession. After this meeting, Paul was shipped off to Rome to stand before Caesar. During that trip, the ship and its crew were challenged by a storm and a shipwreck. Paul, being a prisoner on the ship, held little authority, yet he professed his faith and trust in God to the crew that was keeping him captive. From this experience, Paul teaches us that we must profess our faith even during times of struggle. Paul's life of profession inspired not only believers, but new disciples who also professed Christ. He preached that the things that happened to him turned out for the furtherance of the gospel, and he emboldened believers to speak the word without fear. One of these believers was Timothy. Notice the humility that Paul professes in his letter to Timothy regarding his ministry as an apostle. He says even though he was formerly a blasphemer and a persecutor, he, the chief among sinners, was shown mercy and entrusted by Jesus with authority in his church. In conclusion, we can take special note of how the profession of Peter, Stephen, and Paul are linked together within the early moments of the church. They are not separate random occurrences, but interconnected in a wonderful way by the direction of the Holy Spirit that Jesus foretold. Let me read you two verses from Acts. In Acts 1, 6-9, we read another account of the last words that Jesus left with the apostles. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Sumeria, and to the end of the earth. Now let me read an account that takes place right after the stoning of Stephen, found in Acts 8, 1-3. At that time a great persecution arose against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Sumeria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc for the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. So in the first set of verses, we see the continuation of the Great Commission and a great encouragement from Jesus that when the disciples receive the Holy Spirit, they will be his witnesses in all Judea and Samaria. For a few guys traveling on foot, that would have been an overwhelming task considering how much work stood before them in Jerusalem itself. But as we flip to Acts 8, we see something remarkable. Because of the profession of these first apostles, from Pentecost to the time of the death of Stephen, they have brought up believers in Jesus Christ, who now, due to the persecution from Saul, were forced to the lands that Jesus foretold the gospel would be delivered to. Peter's profession led to Stephen's proclamation of the gospel, which led to the great persecution, which opened the door to the words of Jesus becoming reality for the disciples. The hand of God works so clearly at work in leading the church when we look back from today's perspective. It's awesome to witness how God put all of these pieces together so that his message would reach the world. But for these early apostles and Christians, it may have been quite different in real time, their profession may have seemed like a failure, as the resulting persecution decimates the church in Jerusalem. Only with time can they see the larger scope of God's plan and results of their testimony and faith in the gospel. What lessons can we learn from this? Does God have a bigger plan in the works when we see only short-term disappointments? While we ponder that question, let's continue to give God the glory for being saved and profess our faith in the gospel with courage and conviction as seen in the examples of Peter, Stephen, and Paul. Regardless of our past, it's never too late to make a change in our life and become a living testimony of Jesus Christ.